All right. Let's get this thing started here. Make sure I know where I can sit. Just so I know, just so you know, I am Beak Supreme, and this is for the Beaklebotics YouTube channel. I'm going to attempt to disable my lockout chip on my Nintendo NES. Now this one is, belongs to my friend Tom, and although it's um, almost one o'clock in the morning on November 5th, 2012, I, um, I actually received this you know, yesterday on November 4th, 2012, when my friend Tom come over around. 1.30 or, or no, no, it was about 12.30, a little afternoon, well, no, that's right, about 12 hours ago, <clears throat> and, uh, as it's almost 1 o'clock in the morning now, on November 5th, and he gave me two Nintendo NES, and a GameCube, and a bunch of other stuff, well, anyway, here's my NES that I made in a previous video that I landed the helicopter on, and you see it says Noggle on here, yeah, it's my name. Um, Alright, this is his NES, and I'm going to test it, and I want to see how well it works. Uh, I got my Rocketeer game, which is, was seen in a previous video. I got two of these, and I'm going to test his Nintendo NES and see how well it works. Okay. Big child, daddy's busy. Okay. It is um, probably dirty. Um, looks like it comes up with something. Got to get my. Um, Got to get a Q-tip. I'm going to clean this. Got to find my cleaning kit real quick. Okay. Unlike most people, I don't blow in my cartridges. I used to do that a long time ago. Nintendo um, discourages that. And um, um, okay, now blowing in the game does not deal with the issue of dirt being stuck on the connectors. Okay, if there's loose dust balls in there, of course, blowing on it might handle that, but it doesn't deal with the issue that the connectors are actually dirty and I know people think that blowing on these things is totally great well it's not okay and you're introducing moisture into there onto a, a freaking circuit board of all places but you know a bunch of these people blowing their games they probably don't know any better and uh, you know this is a little bit different than uh, that There we go. Without blowing in it. Okay, so don't be a dumb fuck. Alright. Now I gotta get my controller. Alright, we're gonna, uh, well, obviously it works. And, uh, okay. Play just a little bit of the game, just prove that it works. Okay, I'm going to pan that camera there. Alright, this is one of my favorite games of all time. It came out in 1991. I really, well, I wish the Super Nintendo version was like the NES version, because although the Super Nintendo has better graphics than the NES, the game design on this particular NES version is really good, and I wish it was on Game Boy. Keep my fist. It's been a while since I played this game. I used to be able to get to the top and not use any ammo and not take any hits. Beaky buddy, magical alien man. Magic soul, I love him all I can. He's magic baby, blessed little alien. 
Love is magic soul. He's blessed magic alien baby and he's kid. Love is magic soul just like I know I did. And you should love the magic beaky buddy boy. He will bring me lots of magic blessed alien joy. And he is magic alien monkey man. Love is magic soul all that I can. And magic soul he's blessed him alien boy. And brings me lots of joy. He is kid, and I must love his magical soul, cause he is a kid. Love him. Be oh, I didn't get that. Oh, see, I got to the top without taking a hit, and without using up any uh, ammo. And I know where most of the items are. Oh, all right, pistol time. Rifle. Magic Beaky Blessed Alien is man. Magic Soul, I'm gonna love him all I can. Alright, so I got two working Nintendos. And he's got a third one, but it's looking kind of nasty. And if it works, good. But if it doesn't, then oh well. I can hang a circuit board on the wall. Alright, well, point is, his works. And, um. Alright, I'm going to turn off my TV. And I'm going to. I'm going to focus down on here and show what I'm doing. Bring this closer. And, um, <clears throat> how much time do I got on this recording? No, I think I'm, okay, I got 21 minutes. Well, about 20 minutes. Okay, I think I already established and proved that his Nintendo works. Okay. Um,. Beak Child is in here. <laughs> He's not used to this apartment. Well, he lived in here last year and the previous year, but uh, stayed in here in the winter. But uh, okay, Tom's does not have a cover. Here's my NES. It's got the cover. Okay, and this is my uh, this is my Super Nintendo. It works. And then his Super Nintendo that he sold me is around here somewhere. All right, what I'm gonna do. I'm going to take apart these screws and you got to keep all these screws together. Okay, those screws are for the controller port. Okay, I'm going to do his Nintendo first. And uh, he, was, uh, he just up and gave me this. Pretty awesome. Too many screws. fast for a lot of time on the camera. Unplug this secret Nintendo control port so I don't gotta worry about breaking it off.
Come on out, you dummy. comes another screw, finally, the one I'm trying to get out. Gosh, there's one, two, three, four, five, six just in this thing. It's 29 minutes at a time. I'm trying to get all this in one video. Here's that screw. Now, if you hear music or anything like that right now, that is not me. That is not this apartment. It's one next door over there. They're always loud. Oh, I forgot I left the game in there. Here we go. Probably really dirty in here. Oh, you can see that. Alright, yeah. Alright, <clears throat> let's see. RF shield. Yeah. Yeah, I'll leave the other screw screws in there. Uncomfortable cord on my foot. split this into two videos. It's been a while since I took apart a Nintendo. I got the Rico 203A, I believe it's called. It's a CPU that's in here. It's based off the MOS 6502 microprocessor. The Rico 2A03, yeah, 2A03 the name of it. Um, actually gutted out an old Nintendo that stopped working. And uh, I kept all the chips I got around here somewhere. I also got the 5A22 microprocessor out of a uh, Super Nintendo uh, which the 5A22 was made by Rico and it was second sourced. It was based off the Western Design Center um, uh, 65C816, which in turn was a uh, modified version of the 6502 that was used in the Nintendo NES. Uh, the 65816 was a 16 bit version that was clocked higher and was more powerful and did more stuff, but also was same, at the same time was supposed to be backwards compatible with existing 6502 co uh, code, which would run, you know. So basically, the Super Nintendo could run Nintendo games, um, and Nintendo had Rico take the um, the 65C816. They had like I don't know some more like interrupt timers or whatever, and um, then that became the uh, the basis of the. Okay, here's the RF shield, and uh, oh, it's a big capacitor. That's where the power supply is. Alright, and we'll take off this. Now, I got video proof that this worked before I took it apart, so why? Well, and hopefully it works afterward. 
Uh, I mean, I've, I've built several computers before over the last decade or so, and you know, I know how to do stuff like this. I remember back in the early 1990s, there was a uh, repair shop in the town where I live, and uh, they used to repair Nintendos, back when all this stuff was still really popular. screws in a system. Damn. That Nintendo kept the freaking hardware market in business. But, like, the design of this is pretty simple compared to other game consoles because this doesn't do a whole lot like compared to consoles now. Everybody thinks the Xbox 360 and the PlayStation 3 are so great, but suck the power out of the wall. This thing has 9 volt uh, input uh, at 850 milliamp and that was just because of this voltage regulator that I'm about to show you because I've been learning about this kind of stuff lately and about uh, voltage regulators and uh, I'll take out this last screen And the reason why I'm learning about voltage regulators is for um, my uh, Raspberry Pi box, and I got it. Well, like not all wall adapters are the appropriate voltage for um, uh, for the LEDs. Uh, 3.3 volt is a common voltage for LEDs, especially blue, white, and blue, white, green, and ultraviolet. Um, and so if, you know, if a person can get a hold of a 3.3 volt regulator, they'll be great. God damn, them people are noisy. And, um, okay, here's the, here's the board here. Disconnect this controller port. This is number two. I remember this one on the side here. It's number two. This is controller number one. Yeah, yeah, because it goes. No, 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 I had it backwards. The one in the side is controller number one. This one here is controller number two. Yep, yep, yeah. Controller number one, controller number two. I'm going to have to watch this video for when I put this back together. Come on. Pokemon out of time. Alright, and then this is the this is the power switch and everything. I may have to split this up into two videos. It's gonna suck. Alright, here's system boards of the NES. Check the time on camera. I probably shouldn't have played that video game so long. Yeah, I got nine minutes. Okay. So yeah, at 1.14 a.m., this camera will run out of recording time. Here's the edge connector. Well, not, i do not. i got to take off this arm shield first. So there's shield. Alright, here's that seven, infamous 72-pin connector that you can buy online. For like five bucks someplace or something for that. Um... I'm always I'm always worried about through hole type of soldering. A lot of stuff now is surface mount. Supposedly you can recondition these by lifting them up, so they make so they make better contact. 
And, um, yeah, looks like a harmonica. Here is the system board to a Nintendo NES. There's a voltage regulator there, and this functions as a heat sink. This is the um, 17805. Yeah, it's supposed to take and bring it down to 5 volt. All right, all right. Now here's the RF modulator. All right, here. Okay. Yep, it says it right here. CPU, RP20, the RP2A03G. Neighbor's kids screaming on there, crying and fussing. All right, the Rico 2A03. This is a CPU, the main processor. This is the memory. It says SRAM, also work RAM. So this is the memory. Um, this here is the picture processing unit, basically the graphics processor that what displays to the screen. CRP2C2G-O. Uh, beat channel, um, yeah. Um, this says SRAM, video RAM, right here also. Um, oh, beaky buddy, oh he's so beaky, he is so beaky. NTSC, yeah, because I live in America, I live in Mark, Mark, and um, right here, CIC. This is the chip that is the problem with the blinking light on the NES. I got seven minutes. Whenever a game's not inserted properly, or whenever it doesn't make connection, or whatever it is, this thing right here is the problem. It's encryption and authentication, and it's the lockout chip. And, um, anyway, uh, look at this. A bunch of capacitors, ceramic disc capacitors. Uh, you see resistors, you see uh, 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 electrolytic capacitors. Uh, you see a diode. It looks like a diode. Um, you see a bunch of other stuff. Um, there's some more chips. I don't know exactly what these are. But yeah, it's kind of looks like you can get a lot of this stuff at Radio Shack. And um, anyway, okay. Now we're gonna take our tool. We're gonna take this. And okay. Now see, here's the point of orientation. See, it's uh, the three. The, it's the 3193A, this is 1995 Nintendo, 9039A, uh, this orientation dot right there, if you can see it, means that that's pin 1, so they say count over 4 spaces, so there's pin 1, 2, 3, 4, it's kind of toward the middle of the chip. Say you're supposed to snip that. And so I'm gonna do providing I can get in there. And this is and snipping this one pin here is supposed to disable the whole chip. And keep it from being a problem. So Working my little tool, kind of not really getting in there. Um, so I'm gonna take me a pocket knife. Ooh, I got about four minutes. Go get me a pocket knife. I'm gonna break that thing. Mm. Four minutes and the battery's really low. Oh crap, it took a while to get it open. Alright, now this knife probably needs sharp anyway. There's pin one, two, three, four. Now if I screw it up, it's not too much of a loss because I got emulators and I can still play my games and Still got another working Nintendo. Um, might have two working Nintendos. There we go. Severed that pin. Nice clean cut. 
Peak child? Danny's busy. Say just doing this one thing disables it. Let's suck at this blade went right through this board and uh, cut into my hand. It is pretty sharp. Just gotta make sure it's completely cut. Now, the cool thing about the 6502, which this is just a, this is the Rico 20, the the 2A03, it's just a modified version, an enhanced version of the uh, the MOS 6502 microprocessor. You know, supposedly it was the CPU of the first Terminator in um, the first Terminator movie, because uh, you see MOS 6502 assembly code. Ooh, almost cut into pin number three. Um. CMOS 6502 assembly code come up in the Terminator's display and all that. I hope I got this broken good. The connection. We'll find out. Oh, I got one minute. Uh, I'm gonna hook this stuff back up really quick, and um, okay. Edge connector back on here. Suck ass. Make Controller number one. And then I'll controller number two just in case. It's a little extra picky. No, no, apparently it ain't gonna. Happen. Turn the game. And um, plug up the controller to that. But the camera stopped on it. Oh, three seconds.